chapter 7, lesson 1, is about quotient and remainder. So in grade 2, all they had was simple division. Now we have division that has a remainder. Okay, so key to success for division is really the knowledge of our multiplication tables. So it's important that we review our kids, their tables starting with 2, then 5, 10, then 3, then 4, then 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, so another tool that would be helpful at this point would be flashcards. But if you don't want to use flashcards, you can also ask your kids to start writing down the multiplication tables as well. Just write it down randomly. Okay, so um, the division process starts with divide. Okay, then after you divide, you multiply. Then after you multiply, you subtract. And after you subtract, you bring down. And the process is just repeated depending on how large the dividend is. So the dividend is what you are dividing and the divisor is what you're dividing by. The answer is the quotient. If there's no remainder, then it's a simple division. But when there's remainder, what's left over is the remainder. Okay, so which means if in grade 2, we were doing number of groups, items per group, and total items, now there will be the notion behind items left. So the items left are the remainder. Okay, so all of this is in preparation for word problems. So we will begin with uh, the easy lesson, which is lesson 1. Okay, so the exercises come from page 134. Okay, so I've selected two problems. Okay, so when we divide, what we do is we start with 21 and then divided by 8. So in this exercise, uh, it's set up already for the kids, so which means they just have to fill in. However, in the workbook, you will notice that there's barely any setup. So the kids really need to know when it says 21 divided by 8, how to write it down uh, in computational division. So this is computational division because we have to write it down. Okay, so which means when we're dividing, the best thing to do is count by 8s until you reach... 21 without going over. So that would be 8, 16. So that means that's a 2. And then this will be 16. And then, which means we need to subtract. So we cannot subtract 6 from 1. We need to borrow and regroup. And the thought process is still consistent. So that means I need 4 more to get to 10 and 1 more to get to 11. So that makes this 5 and zero. Okay, so which means our answer will be two remainder five. So this is two, this is remainder five, meaning the quotient is two and the remainder is five. So in simple division, there's no, co there's no remainder. There's only a quotient. Okay, so we do another problem. This is 50 divided by six. So again, what we want to do when we're dividing, we have our kids count tables of 6 until they reach 50 without going over. So we count it, tables of 6 until we reach 50 without going over. So 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48. If we go one more, that goes over. So that means we have 8. And then we multiply. So 8 times 6 is 48 as we counted. So this is minus 2, which means nothing else. That means we have remainder 2. So our quotient is 8. Our remainder is 2. So they have blanks for quotient and blank for remainder. So the quotient is 8 and the remainder is 2. So again, parents, now we have to teach our kids that division will not stop until we get a remainder. Okay, so we still go through the process of 
the divide, then the multiply, then the subtract, then the bring down. There are problems that we don't need to bring down. There are problems that we will need to bring down. Best tool is to count our fingers until we reach without going over. That concludes lesson one of chapter seven. See you in the next lesson.